Hello, I'm Chef Diane DeMeo and welcome to my kitchen. Today we are making a twist on a dumpling where a very good friend of mine, Rosie, over at iHeart Recipes makes her own version which is phenomenal. So today we're going to do a dumpling. It's kind of like a homemade flour wrapper, very Korean style mandu stuffed with some pork, some onions, garlic, ginger, the whole shebang, but we're doing it in a little bit of broth with some black vinegar, sesame seed oil with garlic, and some homemade sambal ula. What do you do to make your own dumpling wrapper? We're going to use about three cups of flour and about one cup of hot water. Make sure that you get it nice and sturdy. Your dough should be thick um, and sometimes you have to knead it for quite some time. I need mine for about 20 to 30 minutes. Today we're not going to need it that much and the reason that you need it like that is because it releases the gluten and makes a really nice chewy, chewy, chewy wrapper. And then I'm going to get my hands dirty. As you can see, it's forming a nice ball. And once I know that I've got all my flour up, do a little bit of kneading. If it feels too sticky like mine does and I just know that it's too sticky, I'm going to add just a tad bit more flour because when it's this sticky, no matter how long you let it rest, no matter how much you knead it, it will not take on the form that you'd like. You'll know that you've had enough flour on your dumpling dough when it actually removes from your hands nicely and as you see this is not removing from my hands nicely yet. Okay, there we go. There you go. Layers that bad boy. Okay, a little bit of flour, but it removes from my hand nicely. Now, this is about the consistency that I want for my dumpling wrappers. Kneading is an easy technique. Palm to bread, turn, twist. That's it. And from here, it's going to go into this bowl and we're going to let it rest for about a half an hour, but we're going to work on the filling for this bad boy now. But at first I'm going to wash my hands. A little icky poo. Okay, so let's get cooking. Let's get this stuff into my bowl. And from here, I'm just going to start layering stuff on here. A little bit of sesame seed oil. We're looking at, oh, that was about two tablespoons. And this is about one pound of ground pork. We got some soy, not too much. You don't want it too salty. Again, another two tablespoons. I add just a touch of this to my meat, but this is also going to be a garnish once they're done. Sweetened black vinegar, and we're looking again about another two tablespoons. So right now the ratio, one pound, two tablespoons of all liquid. And now we go for our garlic. Garlic, we're just gonna chop up nicely. I appreciate good large chunks of garlic, but that's just me. You don't have to do it this way. You can use a mincer or you can leave them into nice little bite-sized pieces. I like my dumplings to have a little bit of like a bite to it, so I just don't taste meat. I have some vegetables going on in there. And that goes. Onions. Now some people actually use egg whites when they do their dumpling filling because it kind of binds it together. No, I'm not into that. I peel my ginger with a spoon. Why? Because it doesn't take uh, all the ginger away. Yeah, I have a nice ginger stick without all the pieces of ginger removed. Lots of ginger. If you notice when you eat dumplings, whether they're from China, from Japan, or from Korea, you have a very, 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 very predominant flavor of ginger. I like ginger, so I use a lot of ginger too. Okay, and that's about two tablespoons. I like scallions. I could easily use a quarter cup to that ratio, but I'm not going to. Maybe an eighth of a cup. In they go. So there we go. Nice and mixy. My dumpling dough has been rested. It's got some good sleep. We're going to take it out. I like to dust off my board with a little bit of flour. It keeps it from sticking. Bye bye. Okay. And I'll do just a couple. There we go. I'm just going to roll out one log because you'll see how far that actually goes. And after we get it into a nice log, we're going to cut it into balls. Okay. 
roll them into a ball, and from here, we're going to roll it out into a nice disc. And the discs don't have to be perfect because as you will see, my discs are surely not perfect. But our goal is not for perfection, it is for deliciousness. Now once I have these filled, I'm gonna have a pot of boiling chicken stock. And you'll know that the dumplings are done, why? Because just like in gnocchi, it's flour based and it, they'll kind of float to the top and they're ready to go. Okay, that's all she wrote and that's all we're gonna do. I got my stuffing. You can put however much you want in here. You're the one that's eating them or serving them, so you know what's best. And fold them over. A lot of times I'll take a fork, crimp my edges. You can be fancier if you want to, but you'll see when we're done with this how nice they look, and being super fancy with how I crimp my edges really won't matter. And now we're ready to go to that stove. All right, my dumplings are ready to go. I have chicken stock already on the stove and it's nice and hot. I'm gonna add some flavorings. Again, as I always say, you can add whatever you want. For me, right now, some onion, some garlic, and some ginger. And in go my dumplings. One, two, three. You can use any type of stock that you want with this. For me, now, chicken stock. As I said before, the way that I know and the way that you're gonna know that these are done is the dumplings actually float to the top, kind of like gnocchi or anything else that you cook that has a flour base to it. I got my dumplings in my bowl with just a little bit of the broth. It's not really a soup, it's more like a dumpling with a little bit of a, kind of a base to it. Now I'm gonna add a drizzle of my seasoned sesame seed oil, which is seasoned with a little bit of garlic. And on top of that, I'm going to give it a dash of that sweet black vinegar. Maybe more than a dash. Oh, about uh, one and a half teaspoons. And then I like to top it off with some burn your mouth sriracha. Now actually this is homemade sambal ulak. A little bit of that can go a long way. I like a lot of spice. Probably for me, one tablespoon. And then is the le shebang. Scallions, right on top. And I think it's time to give this a taste. Got my spoon, I wanna get a nice, even bite of my sambu ulak and some of that broth. Mm -hmm. First of all, my mouth is burning on fire because I took the biggest bite, the sambu ulak. The dough, nice and chewy. The meat, hence of garlic, ginger, scallions, that pork, super fatty, yummy. And that chicken broth gives it a nice mm mm. Plus, with that sweet black vinegar, this is delicious. But if you want to try something a little different, check out iHeart Recipes. Rosie makes an amazing rendition of this dumpling soup. And I'll see you next week with another fabulous recipe. Hello, I'm Chef Diane DeMeo and welcome to my kitchen. Today, our bootleg tip is a flavored sesame seed oil.